as we're thinking about the last four years and where we've been, how can we better prepare ourselves for an upcoming pandemic? You know, back early in the COVID pandemic, Dennis Burton and I wrote a piece of nature about if we were smart, we would have stockpiled vaccines against the leading pathogens mm-hmm. that we know are out there that are universal vaccines against them. Because as we've seen now with, you know, MPOX and H5N1, if we don't have this ready to go, it takes time and, you know, people's, it, it, these, some of these pathogens are, uh, have very serious consequences. So that would be in, in some ways um, a high priority that we haven't done. Yeah. Uh, now, short of that, um, developing data systems that take all of the layers of data, and we've written about this, um, the fact that you'd have your sensors um, Mm -hmm. and your phone, it would have your local instantaneous risk of that condition or multiple conditions with the wastewater, the the genomic variants, the circulating levels, your contact information that um, gives you exposures, um, and all uh, what's coming, what's your best treatment, what's your best vaccination uh, preventive strategy, you know, detecting whether your mask is fit right and mm-hmm. if it's high quality and the air quality in your where you're sitting at any moment in time, both with respect to, you know, carbon dioxide uh, um, and quality itself, uh, filtration, uh, ventilation, you know, instantly, all for the individual level. Now, that's for a respiratory, of course, a pathogen, mm-hmm. which many of them are. Um, but that sort of thing of having all that data on your phone uh, for the people who are um, willing and interested to have this risk assessment yeah. and to get notified, you know, when you're 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 now with someone with yeah, whatever been exposed. been exposed or likely whatever. But we could, you know, if we had just taken temperature of people every day. Um, we would have been able to know, you know, where a new outbreak was starting. And we can, if you, if you want to get into preparedness, I mean, there's so many ways, just lowering heart rate, yeah. as we've done with an app, uh, where people are wearing a wristband. Um, and you can see a signal where there's a cluster in a neighborhood or a, a town or wherever, where there's something going on. Now, is it flu? Is it COVID? Is it whatever? But our preparedness, we have all these ways to know something's off the track early. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just not using them. Yeah. Uh, and as you mentioned, yes, having better antivirals, uh, medications that are great at, um, and effective. You know, nasal vaccines is one thing I'm really big on. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we don't already have those um, for COVID. and. You know, people don't like shots. If they could just have a, at home a spray they could yeah. take every few months, wouldn't that be great? And the universal vaccines um, that are not sensitive to variants because every one of these pathogens evolves. And so, so quickly, we, yeah. we again, we haven't made these a priority. That's so amazing how you're talking about integrating these massive amounts of data, right, from environment to your personal self to your own like heart rate, things like that. It just seems so futuristic. But as you mentioned, we have the capabilities of doing this now. It's just a matter of actually implementing it in these communities and actually deploying it. Yeah, I mean, we have the the way to do this. Uh, The will, the the willingness to devote resources is just not there. Um, Again, I'm confident someday what was just outlined, we will have. Uh, but it's going to take time. Yeah. Uh, it's just a missed opportunity right now. And it shows with the millions of lives that were lost uh, and though also those that were saved by vaccines and medications, um, we, we haven't learned a lesson how serious this is. Right. Um, and I don't know what it will take. We have so much anti-science, anti-vaccine, you know, so much counterforce to the progress. And that's one of the reasons in this country we haven't had the resources allocated because we we don't even have a Congress that 
uh, has agreement that this should be uh, a very high priority. Uh, so we have very minimal funding to do things that we've just been talking about. Right, exactly, where it's, it's impending, right, whatever threat. COVID was an example of that. It was just, you know, we were waiting for some big event like that to happen. And it was a shame we, wouldn't, we, weren't, we weren't better prepared at the time. And now it's just insane to think that we have had the time to prepare. We've seen how things operate when a disease is breaking out. But the fact that we haven't been able to actually do anything at this point or allocate funding and resources just seems absolutely crazy. Yeah, and we're still in the midst of you know, major COVID um, right. circulating, and we will be for years to come unless we do uh, a much more aggressive uh, tactics to mm -hmm. to override that. Um, there's denialism. There's uh, unwillingness to use the mitigation measures we know. There's a very only a very low rate of vaccination, even though yeah. their immunity wanes. You know, as a, a a matter of months, in a matter of months. So uh, it's just crazy that we aren't more intelligent in responding just to the current uh, uh, COVID story, no less uh, the ones that are going to, it's not going to take another 100 years before you have another no, exactly. major pandemic. And with the climate change and all the other forces that are out there, we, we could be looking at something, in, you know, in the relative near term. Right. And it's just... Um, sad that we don't get smarter about it. Yeah. Is there anything actionable to people listening that either like, for, I know funding and resources is a big one and then gaining, regaining trust in science is another one, but is there anything actionable that people could do to help this issue other than kind of just reading up and... Well, being up on it, but, you know, if we all put pressure on our governmental representatives, maybe we'd see some movement. Right. But um, there hasn't been that. And I should say the toll of long COVID is profound Absolutely. with millions of people. We've done a lot of work on that here. And um, that's what's often missed is, oh, well, the death rates are lower now, the hospitalization rates. Well, what about the fact that there's millions of people suffering and, and more that are getting infected now? Mm -hmm. So, um, it's just uh, sad that we don't use that pressure um, that we have. At, you know, supposedly we're being represented, um, and uh, you know it doesn't show with respect to the commitment for the current uh, problems with COVID, no less the ones we're going to face in the future. Right. Absolutely. And these wearable technologies too, that or these biosensors. Um, even being able to track things like heart rate or step count, where in the days leading up to you actually knowing you're sick, it could actually predict this information. Um, yeah, we, we published on that multiple mm -hmm. papers that mm -hmm. the triad of more sleep, so higher heart rate, and less steps is a precursor to COVID or flu. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't take, it, oftentimes those metrics might not even be notable to a person. They, but when you flash the data in front of them and say, well, you know, this is, this could be an infection, and, and indeed it often was. Yeah. So um, we're not using simple things like that. Yeah. Crazy. Well, hopefully in, hopefully in the future, hopefully it is changing towards that because it just seems like, yeah, like you said, a huge missed opportunity. Yeah, I know it, it really is. Um, the digital part never gets the respect that it deserves because it's so inexpensive, passive, easy. And uh, we hit, we've never gotten CDC, the state of California, many other attempts, shots on goal, and they've all come up, you know, blank to, to get that at scale. Why? But why for digital specifically? Is it just that implementing it is too difficult or seems too cumbersome? Or no, it... no. I think everybody's been fixated on other things, wastewater and genomics. Okay. And the digital part has just been... Um, a field of neglect mm -hmm. and anytime I've raised it with so many groups and um, it's kind of like laughed off really? you know uh, and there are over 100 million people that have um, capability uh, for risk data uh, um, capture uh, whether it's Fitbit or 
you know, these other smart watches, yeah. Garmin, whatever. Yeah, people are wearing these. Yeah, things. They're, they're wearing out there. it. And if they're if they're collecting dust in a drawer, you know, put them on. But the point is that most Americans have, and if we covered um, any, like they did, it, they took our work in Germany and they used that, and they they had an instantaneous map of where hotspots were in Germany of COVID. Wow. And we're not doing it here. Yeah, it's, it's like, like this is like a real case study of it working. Yeah. Well, hopefully in the future.